globalization and technology has transformed modern businesses. The modern economy today runs on globally interconnected value chains. May it be Indian Railways carrying 23 million passengers or FedEx handling 29 million pounds of freight per day or the famous Arvind Eye Care Hospital performing 1,500 surgeries daily. All entities owe their success to highly effective and synchronized operating model attributing operations excellence. Be it humanitarian supply chain, military operations, natural disaster management or workings of global businesses, operations excellence is a strategic weapon to many. Symbiosis Institute of Operations Management, NASIC, a forerunner in anticipating the criticality that the field of operations beholds is India's only institute fully dedicated to operations excellence. Under the gamut of Symbiosis International University, SIOM is a sui generis institution established with the mission of empowering and leading operations excellence. True to its mission, SIOM has been fueling the industry with operations professionals churned out of its flagship MBA program in operations management exclusively for engineers since its inception in 2005. Owing to its contributions to the field of operations, SIOM has grown beyond laurels of best industry-related curriculum and it is all geared up towards Industry 5.0 with inclusion of machine learning, artificial intelligence and IIoT. Providing an excellent industry interface, SIOM, now an operational excellence hub, attracts top recruiters for operations-related profiles. SIOM boasts its alumni presence and recruiters network in top companies across the sectors be it manufacturing logistics retail e-commerce hospitality banking and financial services consultancy pharmaceutical and many more Surmounting credibility by corporate recruiters is an outcome of holistic and multidisciplinary engagement of students, be it technical expertise, leadership values or social sensibility initiatives strategically woven in overall learning environment. Backed with robust project-based learning, Harvard simulations, case studies, research orientation and strategic industry interface through research conference, guest lectures, HR Summit, Operations Summit Tatwa, TEDx and two internships. The students are all geared up to take on the challenges of rapidly evolving technological capabilities and value chain complexities, the critical areas of concern for every organization today. SIOM with intent of knowledge dissemination offers corporate training programs, customized certifications and consultancy services in the area of operations. Some of our past and current beneficiaries include multinational corporations like GE, GSK and many more. Connect to us for anything and everything related to operations. SIM pulsates with the conviction that future CEOs and industry leadership will emerge from operations and supply chain domain and we feel responsible towards it. The Citadel of learning and competency development is exclusively for working executives, MBA aspirants and the corporates. We act as catalysts to fuel their careers and of course develop operations competencies within organizations. This love for our niche has developed key result area which will impact your triple bottom lines very very positively. A perfect symbiosis of industry and academia SIM is one-stop shop for everyone who is excited about operations management. I invite you to SIOM, not just to fuel your talent supply chain, but also to engage with us on your operations expertise and experiences. Come, let's engage. Connect to the best in operations. Engage with SIOM for operations excellence.
Hello, my name is Kiran Karande, and I welcome you all to the fifth episode of Editor's Choice. To begin with, Symbiosis Institute of Operations Management (SIOM) at Nashik, a town in Maharashtra, takes great pleasure in bringing you the fifth episode of Editor's Choice, a platform for deliberation by editors from journals of international repute. Today, we have with us Professor Charbel Jose, who is a global chair professor at the Lincoln International Business School, University of Lincoln in UK, about 100 miles from London. Before we hear him, let me introduce Dr. Vandana Sonmane, who is the director of SOM and who would be making the opening remarks before Professor Charbel Jose takes over. Uh, Dr. Vandana Sonwane has rich experience spanning over 32 years, that's a long time, in industry, teaching, research, education, management, and consulting. Her exemplary work in curriculum development focused on continually evolving competency requirements of the industry, culminating into shaping of a niche institute in the field of operations management that SIM stands for today and speedily evolving into center of operations excellence. Under her leadership, SIM has bagged best industry interface, best industry oriented curriculum every year for the last 10 years since 2009. SIM has also received prestigious Education Excellence Award 2018 by CIS, Confederation of International Accreditation, Accreditation Commission Forum in New Delhi, the capital of India. She is a recipient of Distinguished Service Award by Ames International for her contribution to fostering management research and the Indian Leadership Award for Education Excellence by All India Achievers Foundation and the Outstanding B School Director Award last year in 2019. She is on the steering committee of CII India Women Network Council. She is also an independent director on many company boards and has recently been appointed on the National Board of SME Chamber of India. Under her guidance and with her great abilities, SIM has contributed to meaningful research through work in humanitarian logistics, project management, and sustainability solutions during the Mammoth Kumbh Mela at Nashik. She has led a number of research projects. I would now like to hand over the session to her, Dr. Vandana Sonavne, Director of SIM, for opening remarks. Thank you, madam. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, hey, madam, can you go ahead? Uh, uh, hello, Kiran sir. Madam is trying to join. My, madam will join soon. So we can start with uh, uh, Professor Charbel, sir. Okay. Yes, yes. Please go ahead, sir. So madam is joining in the process, uh, in the time that she's joining. Uh, I would like to talk about Professor Charbel Jose also. And uh, let me introduce Professor Charbel Jose, who is the key, no, key speaker for the day. He is ranked among the top five most prolific researcher in green supply chain management in the world. As one of the pioneers of green supply chain management in emerging economies, his innovative research influenced the agenda on sustainable change in Latin America. With more than 10,000 citations, and that's a huge number, according to Google Scholar, H index 54 and ranked in the top two and a half percent globally for research impact, according to Research Gate Score, Professor Charbelido's interdisciplinary research focuses on pressing issues regarding sustainable supply chains, such as role of industry four in unlocking sustainability in supply chains, critical success factors for sustainable production, and innovative business models for the circular economy. He is currently, Professor Charbel Jose is currently a global chair professor at the Lincoln International Business School, Lincoln University in the United Kingdom, about 100 miles from London. Previously, he was a full professor of management at the Triple Crown Accredited, that is ASB, ASCSB, AMBA, and Equis, Montpellier Business School in France, a top 100 best business school in Europe. As an associate professor at the USP University at the University of Sao Paulo, he was one of the youngest academics to be awarded a habilitation, Livre Docencia, to conduct high-level research. 
as an associate professor at the UNESP, that's the Sao Paulo State University. Uh, he was the founder and first director of a new doctoral training program in production and operations management. He consistently publishes research articles in first year scientific journals, including outlets which top important rankings. He conducts globally oriented research with co-authors from more than 10 countries. Since 2004, he has received 11 awards for best paper at international conferences. He has been an associate editor of the prestigious Journal of Cleaner Production, associate editor of Sustainable Production and Consumption, and associate editor of Modern Supply Chain Research and Applications. He has acted as an external examiner for the University of Liverpool, IIT India, University of Sao Paulo, and Waikato University in New Zealand. So this is all about Professor Charabil Jos, a truly illustrious person and somebody who has achieved quite a lot in the academic field by way of his research and academic publications and so many other things. So I would like to now hand over to Professor Charabel Jos to continue the session. Dr. Sunon is joining us in the meantime. Sir, can you please start, sir? Hello. Yeah. <clears throat> a good Hello. afternoon, sir, to you. And I hope it's quite well there, you are quite okay and everything and ready to do the session. Yeah. It's a great pleasure to be here with you. Sir, same uh, here, same here. Together, you are doing an outstanding job uh, with I, uh, SI, uh, OM. So, and I would like to thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, Professor Arun yeah. Kumar and Man, uh, the director, for the opportunity of being here. So, if I may, I would like to start sharing my screen with you. Uh, just a moment. It should be here. Yeah. Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Uh, could you please confirm my slide is uh, visible? Yes, sir, it is. It is clearly visible, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Please, please go. <clears throat> Thank you very much. So it's a pleasure to be here and uh, to have this discussion from green to sustainable supply chains, future research opportunities in behavioral and the human factors. So the idea of this presentation is to provide, you know, academics and the students with a number of research questions, which you know can be useful uh, for their, you know, PhD projects and the future articles, and uh, <clears throat> of course the technology side of green and sustainable supply chains has evolved, but we do need to discuss much more the human and behavioral side of this debate. So the today's presentation has two main objectives. The first one is to really understand how this debate on behavioral and the human aspects in green supply chains uh, started when it started, how it has evolved, and to identify future research opportunities regarding the human side of green and sustainable supply chains, okay? Uh, so what is sustainable operations? What is green and sustainable supply chains? And to discuss this point, I would like to bring to you uh, the definition of sustainable operations and supply chains used by the most prestigious journal in you know, our field, which is the Journal of Operations Management, which is an FET journal. And the, uh, the definition of sustainable operations, which includes sustainable supply chains by JOM, 
is the application of operations management principles, tools, and insights to improve some combination of environmental, social, and the economic outcomes. And the meaning of environmental green management means uh, reducing negative effects of operations and supply chains on the natural environment. At the same time, sustainable and green supply chains should enhance the quality of life and the well-being of society and the stakeholders. So it's 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 a good challenge, you know, to discuss how to achieve sustainable and the greener supply chains. And the colleagues and I have systematized uh, what is the meaning of green supply chain. And green supply chain, based on this recent paper, means a lot of things. It's really multidimensional. It's based on, if you can see here, a number of practices, tools, and the insights to reduce environmental and the social impacts across a supply chain. For example, eco-design, environmental innovations, green compliance, green purchasing, and the others. But the most challenging you know, <clears throat> thing to consider from a researcher perspective is that each practice and tool of green supply chain can be analyzed through a different organizational theory. So you have ecological modernization, stakeholders theory. So it's very challenging uh, area of research. If you want to understand the green and sustainable supply chains, because not only the reality is complex, but also the theory quite complex and you will need to combine organizational theories in a different way. So this is a framework systematizing what we understand by green supply chains. And uh, to go beyond you know, the academic uh, discussion, we have MNS assessing the green credentials of its suppliers. So they have just created three tiers. So you can be a, 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 a golden supplier, gold status supplier, when you match all the sustainability criteria. And the MNS, which is a big prestigious retailer in the UK, really wants to see pretty much all of its suppliers in a very proactive green supply chain maturity level. So this discussion is reaching uh, industry as well. But at the same time, I would like to bring, this is from India, if I'm not wrong, it's a, a, a report from Estiang India and I love this because, you know, the conclusion is not ideal, but the report says that organizations around the world are failing to follow sustainability and to implement green practices because of the lack of support from the top leadership team limited understanding and involvement of employees. So we have here a human aspect of green transformation within industry. We have to debate and to understand the role of human resources, behavioral aspects, okay? And I would like to bring this uh, this research conducted by both Harvard Business Review 
and the MIT, when they try to decodify the DNA of the most proactive companies in terms of sustainability. And in this research, Harvard Business School and the MIT compare the most evolved companies in terms of sustainability and the less evolved ones. And for example, they found that the most advanced companies invested a lot on behavioral leadership, what we can call the soft side of green transformation within companies. For example, if you look at this, employees in sustainable companies view sustainable strategies as essential. So you have 80% of employees in more sustainable advanced companies considering sustainability as essential, while just 20% of employees in less sustainable companies consider sustainability to be essential. If you look at this, 66% of most proactive companies have connected their performance evaluation and compensation to sustainability performance uh, criteria. So you can see that when you connect sustainability to human resources practices, your company can start evolving and achieving a better sustainability. And of course, it will affect the way companies understand the green supply chains and sustainable supply chains. So how has this debate on behavioral and the human side of sustainability evolved? So basically, what we know is that green sustainable human resource management is now considered to be the label, the name of this new area of behavioral human soft side of green transformation within companies. And it means the alignment of human resource management, best practices, recruitment and selection, training, performance assessment, rewards, and dimensions of human resource, which, you know, it's in charge of the top management to create and lead, such as leadership, empowerment, teamwork, and organizational culture. These, these groups of you know, practices and dimensions can really drive how companies value green supply chains, sustainable supply chains, and how successful these companies can be while adopting the latest frameworks towards a more sustainable industry. So overall, the understanding of the academia is that these practices and dimensions of human resource management, behavioral aspects can really, you know, decide how green, how sustainable companies can be. And of course, top management leadership will play a big role in this process. Uh, in an, you know, from the academic perspective, this debate started 25 years ago with this very first book called Greening People. So it was published in 96 by Wemeyer, uh, a British professor and the book is dedicated to understand 
how to align behavioral factors, human dimensions to green strategies within companies. After that, we have a very, you, you know, we have a number of very good uh, contributions. I have picked up some of them. The paper by Govinda Rajulu and the Bonnie Daly in industrial management and data systems, when they, they write about motivating employees for environmental improvement. And their contribution was, you know, to link behavioral aspects with steps of the ISO 14,000. So as you can see here, they have a number of practices management, commitment, empowerment, rewards, feedback, and review, mainly linked to ISO 14000, which was a you know, very important green framework uh, a decade ago. It remains important, but was really decisive for green improvements 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Uh, this is my humble contribution. So 12 years ago, I published one of the first papers on how to link behavioral and the human aspects and sustainable objectives of companies. At that time, this journal uh, accepted this paper, which is a conceptual paper. Uh, and the paper is the central role of human resource management in the search for sustainable organizations. And at that time, I proposed the research framework in which human behavioral aspects can play a vital role in enhancing firms' performance in terms of innovation, diversity management and environmental performance. And if, if your company has a behavioral management, human resource management, unlocking these three dimensions of sustainability, you are likely to have a more sustainable organization and to contribute with sustainable development. So based on this paper, I started, you know, making connection with other behavioral uh, researchers interested in sustainability. And I'm very proud uh, to let you know that I'm, I'm a close friend of Dr. Renwick. Uh, and he has the most cited paper in green human resource management. And he proposes a research agenda and the most important, how to teach behavioral and the human aspects uh, to unlock industrial sustainable transformation. So it has a teaching package alongside this paper. But I can say I can say that you know now green and behavioral human uh, management is really strong because we, we we have the support of Professor Susan Jackson from Rutgers University. So she's a former president of the Academy of Management, and uh, she managed to put together all researchers in this field, and they organized the first special issue on green human resource management. So it was a great pleasure to work with her, Douglas Renwick and uh, Michael muller kamen in this very first special issue on green uh, human resource management. And after that, we have an ongoing research project 
uh, we, we have collected the data in five different countries, including India, to compare aspects of behavioral uh, management, human resource management, uh, and the green management in different countries. And you can see that the, 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 the field has evolved and now you have big names working on green human resource and the behavioral side of, of sustainability. For example, uh, Professor Pascal Paillet, who is now in Neoma Business School in France, has just published Greening the Workplace, which is a great book. And Professor Douglas Renwick has just published Contemporary Developments in Green Human Resource Management Research. And what is missing from my point of view is, you know, is to really understand how this theoretical perspective can be applied to green supply chains and more sustainable supply chains, to sustainable operations management. You know, your area, you know, fields that SIOM is, is outstanding in doing research because, uh, for example, this, this uh, research just published, uh, published in Fortune said that, you know, half of the companies, surveyed companies, are now using their green reputation to attract the best workforce in the world. If you, if you visit this site, which this website, which is dedicated to green jobs, you will find there are thousands of new jobs in green manufacturing, green supply chains. And I just try to find, you know, how many jobs that are in indeed with the term sustainability. And you can see here around 35,000 jobs globally dedicated to sustainability. So there is here huge opportunity for the brilliant students of SIOM to work in this green revolution. And uh, if, you, if you have examples, you know, from, from industry, so you have Alcoa, you know, uh, a big amount of executive compensation and the, and the remuneration linked to sustainability. Uh, G using human resource department to integrate sustainability into the organizational culture. So you can see these transformations happening. And if you see UPS, I don't know if you have visited their website but they have now an agenda. They have points on how to manage behavioral aspects, human resource to support their sustainability strategy, green logistics, from training to engagement to employee communications. So I encourage you to visit these websites and I can share these, these slides with Professor Arun Kumar, so you have access to all the references. Yes, sir, yes, sir. But now, thank you. But now, you know, I, I, I could spend hours and hours talking with you about these topics. Yes, sir. But I need to, yeah, it has been a pleasure. But I, I would like to, to discuss now what I see as a great research agenda in this field. So you will be able to pursue your PhD, master's dissertation, or even submit your, your paper to journals such as Journal of Cleaner Production. Uh, and we do need more papers on the behavioral side of sustainable operations. So, 
I, I brought to you uh, seven big topics and each topic has at least two questions so you can use in your research. So I would like to talk about green supply chain management, the circular economy, the Cambridge model for sustainability leadership, tensions of sustainability management, sustainable industry 4.0, the renewed triple bottom line. So two years ago, John Elkington published the paper in Harvard Business Review telling us, you know, he was recalling the concept of triple bottom line. So what, what does it mean? So we need to address this. And the new green recovery post COVID. Okay, so if you are in the UK, there is a new UK strategy for a green economy based on 10 points, which will generate more than 200,000 green jobs. So if you have the skills, the knowledge, you can be part of this green transformation. So for each one of these topics, uh, you, you have a, a, you know, a short discussion with you. So regarding green supply chains, uh, I'd like to explore you know, the ideas that I've published in this paper, green human resource management and the green supply chain management, linking to emerging agendas, uh, I'm surprised, you know, this paper is receiving so many citations and it has a framework. It looks complex, but it isn't, okay? Uh, so basically, the idea is that we have green supply chain management practices, reverse logistics, green purchasing, cooperation with customers, eco-design, internal environmental management, and investment recovery. These practices and tools will need support from operations management and also from behavioral management, human resource management. And how to achieve that support? We, are, we will need to discuss how recruitment and selection of the workforce will bring new ideas in terms of green supply chain management. What kind of training do we need to provide the workforce with? What kind of rewards? You know, people are talking about uh, net zero supply chain, net zero logistics. But how to achieve that if you don't give the right incentives to the workforce? And this is the, you know, the challenge. You have to have a top leadership team capable of unlocking teamwork, empowerment, and a sustainable culture. And we are talking here about long-term uh, conditions, you know, to develop a sustainability plan. And the questions that I would like to bring to you uh, in terms of green supply chains and behavioral aspects are what kind of behavioral barriers or initiatives can hamper or boost the adoption of green practices across supply chains. So you can have barriers hampering your efforts, or you can have good initiatives, critical factors, enhancing, boosting uh, your green supply chain. How could the human resource management of the focal company, you know, the most important company in a supply chain, the company which, you know, has the bargaining power in a supply chain. 
how can that special company help suppliers, first year, second year suppliers in becoming, you know, greener? People are talking about the circular economy based supply chains. And there is a lot of debate about the circular economy. So basically, the circular economy is an alternative to the linear economy. So the linear economy is based on take, make, and waste. It's pretty much what we have in place right now in our planet. We take, we make, and we waste. And the idea of a circular economy is that you will have, you know, materials flowing through more efficient supply chains. Okay, so you have raw materials circulating for much longer in the economy. But what kind of behavioral factors do we need to unlock a circular economy? And I would like to bring a brilliant report from Accenture. And they say, you know, it's very interesting because they say, you know, most of the supply chain managers, they don't have a circular mindset. They want to sell their products and never see them back, you know. But if you work with a circular economy supply chain, you will want to sell your products, products and to recover them. So this is a big research area. I would like to see, you know, your students and stakeholders exploring further. Leaders with a circular mindset. So what's ne necessary to change in terms of procurement, manufacturing, logistics, sales and marketing, product use, end of life disposal, and the reverse logistics to unlock a circular economy based supply chain. For example, what about sales? We need a new sales mindset. You can see here, from never seeing your product again to customer and asset life cycle management. So in a circular economy, companies will do whatever it takes to bring their products back okay, to recover the value of the products after use. So this is a big research opportunity and there are questions here. What is the role of human resource in transiting from a linear production system to a circular economy based supply chain? Do circular economy new companies invest more in sustainable human resource than others? Are they better? What is necessary to develop a circular mindset in supply chain? So these are, you know, open questions. Another research opportunity relies on the Cambridge model for sustainability leadership. So Cambridge has a, a globally famous MSc in sustainability leadership, which is endorsed by Prince Charles. And they work uh, in that MSc, they work with this sustainability leadership framework. As you can see here, developing sustainability leadership can be done and achieved within supply chains. But there is no research about this. So the question here is how to, you know, have a leadership context, individual leaders, which will be able to deliver actions which will 
ultimately drive supply chains towards sustainability. So in this Cambridge sustainability leadership model, you have lots of you know, behavioral aspects, human challenges that we have to address if we want to transit towards a more sustainable and greener uh, supply chain. For example, uh, what kind of skills do we need? And I remember uh, Professor Arun Kumar, Mam, Vandana, and Dr. Kara, we were addressing what kind of skills do we need to, to develop in our students? And, uh, you know, this is really a challenge. What kind of skills, knowledge uh, to unlock, are necessary to unlock a green transition? And the questions that I leave to you are, how much does the context limit of increase the chances of being a sustainability leader? For example, in the UK, the prime minister has just published 10 points, 10 priorities for green industrial revolution. So this is, seems to be the right context to be a sustainable leader, to transform your sustainable supply chains. Second question, how to measure positive and negative impacts of sustainability leadership in the long run? What tensions and the challenges will sustainable leaders face? And you know, this is my one of my questions and, and considerations that you know we, we we have to talk about informal leadership. Many places have informal leadership. So what is the role of informal leadership, you know, natural leaders in promoting sustainability across supply chains? You know, you can have a, a, a supplier which is really passionate about sustainability. How does that influence your supply chain? Tensions of sustainability. So when we talk about sustainability, we talk about trade-offs, tensions, challenges. And I bring to you this this is amazing. This is an award-winning framework to understand sustainability tensions. It's published in the Journal of Business Ethics, uh, an FT journal. And uh, I try to systematize, you know, the holy paper in this figure, but it's a challenge. So basically, when you know, when discussing sustainability and sustainable operations you will probably find four groups of tensions and the conflicts and trade-offs. So the first one is uh, among the dimensions of the triple bottom line, social, environmental, and economic. And when we say tension, it means that when you try to optimize one of those dimensions, other dimension can be affected. For example, you want to be greener, but you will need to spend more in the, in the short run. So the first group of tensions is, uh, relate, relates to the dimensions of the triple bottom line. After that, we have another uh, group of tensions which can emerge from how to change. For example, you work in a company and your company wants to be, you know, wants to have a greener supply chain. How to change, how to start this journey. So people and your colleagues will have different opinions. So it's likely that you will face tensions and the trade-offs. Uh, contextual complexity. 
So, you know, it's about targets, deadlines. When the transition towards sustainability we went, and the levels, so the last group of tensions is levels. For example, you as an operations manager, you really want to pursue sustainability, but the top management leadership of your company uh, don't. So you have, you know, levels with different perspectives about the meaning of sustainability. So please, while conducting research or, you know, working on uh, green supply chain transformation, consider these challenges. And have sustainable human resource oriented companies less tensions? Do they have less tensions? Are they better in terms of management of tensions and trade-offs? And what is the role of human resource management in alleviating these tensions? So these are pretty much open questions. Uh, another topic is sustainable smart technologies and how they can unlock green supply chains. And I bring this framework uh, published by colleagues and I, when we systematize 11 behavioral aspects, which can very much influence the joint adoption of both Industry 4.0 and environmentally sustainable manufacturing towards green supply chains. So you can have a look at this paper published in Technological Forecasting and Social Change. And why smart technologies and the industry 4.0? Because they can enhance productivity and at the same time, they can reduce environmental impact. I'd like to share with you that my university, the University of Lincoln, uh, has just been awarded uh, more than two million pounds to build up the, the, the first robotic farm in the world. So basically no humans are allowed. <laughs> and uh, the idea is that, you know, a robotic farm totally controlled by artificial intelligence and the robots will bring down environmental impact. We will avoid the waste. Okay, so this is an ongoing project. There are dozens of PhD scholarships available if you are interested into this. Uh, so the questions here are, have sustainable human resource management oriented companies more success in adopting industry 4.0 trends? You know, if a company is more sustainable, does it lead, does it, you know, lead to more efficiently adopted industry 4.0 smart technologies? And what is the, the role of sustainability leaders in facilitating the transition to a digital supply chain? a greener supply chain. Uh, topic six, let me see if we have time. Yeah, we do. Top, topic six, a new perspective on triple bottom line. As you know, triple bottom line is a globally recognized concept. It's, it's, it, it, it suggests that sustainability in organizations can be achieved through economic, social, and environmental performance of firms. But, you know, two years ago, the person who created the concept, John Elkington, published a paper in Harvard Business Review telling us that people and most of the companies 
and not using the concept in the right way, that the meaning of triple bottom line should be reconsidered. John Elkington is talking about much more, you know, uh, regeneration of economy, society, and uh, the, you know, it's a more, much more wider perspective of sustainability than what companies and sometimes professors uh, apply uh, the, the concept of triple bottom line, you know, he's talking about a bigger transformation of the society which you know I, I understand should include operations management and supply chains. But as this recall, this is the first concept to recall I've ever seen. So there is lots of research in this area to be conducted. So for example, what is the role of human resource management in going beyond the current and the limited understanding of triple bottom line. So what is the meaning of a real triple bottom line concept in modern supply chains? How to achieve that? How to measure that? If you can, if, if you make, you know, if you can make a contribution in this area, this would be amazing. How to measure real triple bottom line based on this conceptual recall by John Welkington. Open question, lots of research opportunities here. And this is a very contemporary discussion. Green recovery post COVID. What is the meaning of these supply chain managers? So, you know, the British Prime Minister had just published a 10-point plan towards a green industry strategy in the UK, which will create 250,000 uh, new jobs in supply chains, green manufacturing, uh, and is going to, to spend 12 billion pounds. So it's, it's huge. But the question he, here is, do we have all the skills? What kind of you know, engineer uh, management professional do we need to, to unlock this green industrial revolution? So what is the role of supply chain managers in the transition to a net zero economy. So at Lincoln, many companies have approached us, you know, they are telling us can, how, how, how to, to achieve a, 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 a net zero supply chain because they understand this is the future. And what are the skills and knowledge that supply chain professionals need to develop in a context of a green economy. So how can academia help, you know, this green transition? So just to conclude, I think I'm not late. <laughs> so just, just to conclude uh, with a map of key concepts so, of course, we started by discussing organizations, of course. And the organization has have both positive and negative outcomes of their operations. The positive, you know, outcomes, we very much enjoy them. We are living longer. Uh, we have more technology but companies tend to generate some negative aspects as well. And uh, one way to uh, reduce negative aspects is by investing in green and sustainable supply chains. And as you can see here, 
we can, you know, enhance uh, and pursue greener supply chains through technology, what's great, but it's necessary to debate human soft behavioral aspects of this transition. And uh, there is an emerging field of research called the green human resource management, which is growing a lot to deal with the behavioral side of sustainable operations and companies. And I've brought to you key sustainability frameworks and a potentially original research agenda to help you, you know, thriving and conducting research in this very important area. And uh, there are some references here if you want to, to use. And I would like to thank you very much, uh, you, the audience, but particularly Symbiosis Institute of Operations Management, uh, Dr. Vandana, director. Thank you, ma'am. I would like to thank Professor and Dr. Aron Kumar and Professor and Dr. Kiran. Thank you. It has been a great pleasure to be here with you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. And so uh, I will stop sharing my screen. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, all I would like to say is that it's been very nice hearing you. I myself have understood a lot. I now understand that uh, if I have to do research in green supply chain or HRM, what are the research areas? That is a big problem for budding researchers, those who start out in a field. They really need to know how to go about because everything looks so new. So I think you have done a great job of charting out, absolutely charting out the path which a new researcher can take while embarking on research in green supply chain and HRM. Excellent presentation. And it's like a review you have done, an overview of the whole field, what all a new person can do, somebody who wishes to enter this research, what he can do to uh, write papers or go into research. So that way I have benefited immensely and I'm sure all those others have also learned a lot. Sir. Excellent presentation. I have one question Thank for you. you, sir. Thank you so much. Yes, I yes. Just one question. Thank you. you sir. Um, and uh, you already you already discussed about future research opportunities, and um, let us trends also we are aware. Uh, sir, I would like to ask you a simple question about your experiences as an editor. Personally, also I would uh, like to know you have been an editor in many esteemed and prestigious journals. So, what have you, what have you what have you are ex been your experiences in this? And anything you yeah. could share about it, please, sir. Would very much like to hear about it. Thank it's you a different very field. Much. It's a different field yeah. altogether. Please. Yeah, you know, as an editor, we really want to see, you know, original ideas. Okay. Something that is really, you know, exciting and new. So, for example, I I just found a paper about, you know new business models and the circular economy. So something really new, uh, original with primary data, uh, if possible. Yes. But we are looking for something, you know, really new. Okay, original. Uh, original, you know, if you talk, you know, because for example, green supply chain management, Yes, uh, has evolved to sustainable supply chain. And now it's pretty much about circular economy. Yes. So if you have a research on how operations management and supply chains will adapt to the circular economy context, this Correct. would be much more interesting. Yes, 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 I understand, sir. Uh, sir, uh, I think we are running out of time. So I really don't have, but it was very nice hearing you. And what I would like to again say is that uh, absolutely, sir, I am happy that you have charted out excellent path for somebody starting out new in this field. 
when we did our phd when we started off there would be so many articles you don't know which way to go there are so many ways in which you can go ahead that itself takes a lot of time to focus so i think you have done a wonderful job of focusing and charting a path for us i would like really like i'm greatly appreciate sir and greatly thanks to you thank you very much and you have you know this forum is just outstanding i would like to congratulate it is the it is our madam audience. so director madam who has done it and she's done a wonderful job of this i think uh, I, uh, yeah thank you it's a pleasure to be with for our forward sir. thinker forward thinking you know scholars like you no no sir we are grateful that we could hear you please sir arun kumar sir please carry on carry on sir So, thank you sir thank you sir sir, uh, sir uh, thank you sir on behalf of uh, siom i take this opportunity to thank all those who have directly and indirectly contributed to this webisode 5 of editor choice organized by our institute at the outset i thank our speaker professor charbel sir we really enlightened with your knowledge and presence sir we are thankful to our uh, director professor Vandana uh, Swainmane for her motivation and continuous support to make this webisode come into reality. Special thanks to research committee, faculty, and staff for their unflinching support and coordination. And heartfelt thanks to all participants who are connected virtually with us. So before ending today's webisode, I would like to announce the speaker for next webisode, webisode six. The speaker is Professor. Uh, but mccarthy uh, he is a professor of operations management at the university of nottingham and he is also a european editor of international journal of production economics published by elsevier so with this with this we move to the end of today's episode thank you thank you sir thank you uh, charbel sir so i will definitely connect with you because one of my research scholar is doing uh, re research in this topic uh, that sustainable supply chain practices in pharma pharma 4.0 pharma 4.0 like industry 4.0 we can say yeah. call it as in pharma 4.0 definitely i will connect with you sir Then thank you very much sir. yeah thank it, you thank you sir thank you sir thank, thank you. you very much great to to be here with you thank you Thank you sir. Thank you. Yes sir, we would like to thank you once again for a great wonderful session. Thank you sir. Thank you. Take care. Yes sir. Absolutely sir. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Bye sir. Bye.